So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Karina Rackett and I'm the Executive Director at BIC and your host for this, the fourth in our new series of BIC Brunches, the Thema Sessions, brought to you in collaboration with Editor, the organisation that manages and develops the Thema Standard. Today's session, as you can see, uh, will be uh, exploring the use of Thema for the rather broad topic of popular or general um, trade adult nonfiction. So, why the new uh, why the new series of Big Branches focused on Thema? Well, at the end of February this year, we announced that the um, the BIC Standard Subject Categories Scheme, or BIC Codes, as it's more commonly known, uh, will be made obsolete by February 2024. This theory, series of Thema sessions then uh, will run from now until at least then um, to help support the industry through that transition. So we've currently got the following sessions lined up for you in addition to today's. Um, so the fifth one on our agenda is um, non-fiction academic, so looking at the topics such as medicine, law, et cetera, um, that will be in November. And then in January, we'll have the sixth in the series on uh, the topic of comics and manga. Um, we've got more in the pipeline, as I've just alluded to, to take you through to February 2024. Um, and we'll announce th those as soon as we have um, speakers and content confirmed. You can book onto any of the uh, BIC branches and any of our training sessions, including Thema training, um, via the link on the screen at the moment. Um, in terms of our past Thema sessions that you may have missed, um, in April we held a BIC branch offering a guided tour um, through the recent release of uh, version 1.5. Um, prior to then, we held a session in March looking at the topic of adult fiction. And in uh, May, we had a session on diversity, equity and inclusion. In July, uh, we had a session on children's, teenage and educational material. And the recordings for all of those um, are on YouTube and available for, for, um, for anyone to look at. Um, as long as you have access to YouTube, you don't have to pay anything. It is free to, to look at. Do feel free to tweet about this event using the hashtag BICBrunch. Um, and we'll be sharing the slides from today's session later on. So um, don't worry if you um, if you didn't get a chance to make a note of the rather long um, links on the screen there. So some housekeeping before we get started. Uh, questions will be invited at the end of the presentations. Please use the question box that you should have uh, on your um, your little sidebar, your little tool toolbar. Uh, put your question in there. Um, you can put the question in at any time. You don't have to wait till the Q&A session. Uh, the event is being recorded for BIC to use in its marketing and to let people that weren't able to attend today to still enjoy the event later and for people um, to, to explore, uh, you know, perhaps further down the line. Finally, a reminder that uh, BIC is a neutral membership organisation and as such, we politely ask that all attendees and all speakers strictly avoid comments, conversations or questions that they might that might be considered commercially sensitive or anti-competitive. So thank you in advance for that. So here's the running order for today. We will start with Chris from Editor, who will give a, a brief introduction to, to Thema, and then we'll, we'll hone in in more detail on, on the topic at hand. Um, we'll then move on to um, Sarah, Sarah Spencer from Cicerone, um, who will talk about how and why um, the move was made for them to Thema, and then we'll hear from Kieran Smith um, at Blackwells and Wordery um, to hear about Thema from the perspective of the retailer. Once all the presentations have been given, it's over to you, um, our attendees, for questions and answers. Um, please do make the most of this opportunity um, to ask our experts any questions that you might have regarding this topic. Um, just to reassure you, no attendee names will be revealed um, unless you want me to. Um, so um, you won't be identified in the recording or, or even in, in this session at all unless you want me to. Um, and then we'll finish. Uh, we're planning on finishing by 1.30. So before we get started, a quick intro for those who aren't familiar with BIC. 
Um, I appreciate some of you will be, so please bear with me. Uh, but for the benefit of those who aren't, um, BIC is a UK-based not-for-profit members organisation at the heart of the book industry, creating standards, best practices and resources that form part of the DNA of your supply chains, helping your organisations become more efficient, save money, become less wasteful and ultimately greener. We hold a unique position of trust, facilitating UK and international industry-wide collaboration to reach agreement on dependable standards and best practice in the supply chain. We do this in a variety of ways, including running five strategic committees focusing on metadata, libraries, physical, digital and green supply chains. We offer training events and workshops and execute supply chain related projects for and on behalf of not only our membership, but also the wider book industry. We also operate three industry recognized accreditation schemes. You can find out more about us um, on our website via the link there. So back to the purpose of today's session. As I've already mentioned, today's speakers will share expert hints and tips on how Thema can be used by publishers and booksellers to help with the discoverability and promotion of popular non-fiction books, including how best to use qualifiers, national extensions, um, both of which to, to help signpost readers to the content that they're searching for within this broad topic area. We'll also explore what can be achieved by Thema that can't be achieved by using bit codes, and how Thema might be used for additional purposes beyond the initial classification. So, for example, um, the creation of marketing lists and international discoverability, and I'm, I'm sure that we'll hear about a lot more. So, without further ado, there's a lot to get through. I'm going to hand over to Chris Sena. Chris is Standards Editor at Editor, um, and after a brief introduction to Thema, Chris will, amongst other things, be giving us advice um, via worked examples on how best to use qualifiers and national extensions and we'll be offering tips on using the Thema browser I believe um, and looking at different approaches for classifying book, books so if you can bear with me while I just make Chris the presenter there we go I should soon have the floor Chris so over to you right uh, thank you, Karina. Um, I hope everybody can see my screen. Um, and welcome uh, to this fourth session of um, uh, looking at Thema. Um, just a quick reminder who editor is for those of you who may not know. I'm sure most of you do. We're, <clears throat> we're a not-for-profit organization based in London. And we have a global membership from all over the world and all from all parts of the uh, book supply chain. And what we do is we develop, support, and promote uh, metadata standards like Thema. And what is Thema? Again, <clears throat> this is just a brief reminder um, of that, what Thema is. So it's an international multilingual book subject classification scheme, and it's designed to meet the needs of the whole book supply chain and uh, to meet the needs on a global and on a local basis. It's not uh, designed uniquely for physical or digital, it's for the whole, it's for all types of books. And it's there to help with discoverability, with merchandising, and with boosting the sales of books. It's created and maintained by people who use it and by people who are using book classification on a day-to-day -day basis. It's a scheme that's heavily oriented towards encouraging people to use faceted or filtered searches. Another quick reminder that Thema is there to indicate the main subjects of the work. Um, it's not designed to act as a replacement to keywords, not to pick out just peripheral themes or topics or incidental characters. The theme is not there also just to change every week. So you can, so you can get, um, you start for marketing reasons or to mislead potential readers. 
Theme is about choosing the right shelf to put your book on, to put the title in. Theme is not about target audience codes. There's other ways of exp expressing audience. But obviously there's a bit of an overlap when you're looking at a subject classification. There are certain top themes, topics, classifications that are by their very nature geared to a particular kind of audience. And theme is not there either to identify um, the creators. The structure of Thema, from a practical point of view, it's made up of, of about 3,000 um, subject categories arranged in 20 sections. There's about 1,000 <clears throat> core qualifiers and about 4,000 national extensions in the, in the qualifiers. And new qualifiers are used in conjunction with the subjects. And it's, it's a set of codes um language independent codes that can be exchanged in metadata and then those codes have a definition in english and in 25 other languages now and a lot of those um uh, codes also have notes to help in the classification choosing the right uh code to use <clears throat> there are six uh, guidance rules um these are just there are rules but there's no thema police to come and enforce these but these are six general rules of guidance to help people who are using Thema. Um, ensure the first subject category is the primary one. And if you use Onyx, it should be flagged as the main subject. Two, classify titles as precisely as applicable or as broadly as required. Don't use detailed categories and the broader ancestor of the same code. Same principle applies to any hierarchical system. Assign as many categories as necessary within reason. Again, this is not a keyword scheme. This is subject categorization. Think about four subject categories is is enough maximum. One and two, one or two also perfectly appropriate. Have the qualifiers whenever appropriate. Um, look at the scope notes and consider the context. So today. We're looking at general adult nonfiction. Um, so which codes are we talking about? Well, basically any of the codes in A to W. Any of these could be uh, popular nonfiction. Obviously, there are some sections um, where the nature of the codes, there are probably more non popular nonfiction titles, W, uh, the lifestyle, hobbies and leisure, uh, the V section, the health relationships and personal development, and other sections, for example, the technology section or the science section, where it may be more academic. But there's nothing in the Thema codes themselves that indicate those codes are for general public. That's done elsewhere. And for those of you who use Onyx to communicate your metadata, it's done using an audience code. So we're talking about books that would get this code, the zero one, aimed at a general adult audience. And that looks like that in, in an Onyx feed. <clears throat> May also be something you described describe in the audience description. So I'm gonna just look at a couple of sections um, just to give examples of the use of this. So here we have a, a book, it's a history book, but it has two subject codes, four qualifier codes, two core qualifiers, two national extension qualifiers, but there's nothing in any of those codes that's going to say this is popular nonfiction. This is a book that by its very subject could be more academic in its approach, could be more uh, general public. So again, that information is elsewhere. That information is in your in your own Onyx. Now, I've got, this is primarily a history book. So I'm choosing a, a European history code, the Roman ones to indicate this is the principal subject of this book. And then I have these six codes as well. All of these codes work together. They all apply to the whole of the contents of the book. The qualifiers apply to, the four qualifiers apply to the two subject codes. There's no affinity with one or the other. So it all, everything works together. And I've got two codes starting with three. These are time period qualifiers, and I've used two time period qualifiers. One, a general one on the first century. This gives a link to any books that cover this period of time. 
And I've also used a more precise, well, it's actually a bigger time period, but it's more precise to a certain market, indicating that this particular title deals with the period of um, Roman Britain, Roman Britannia. And having that national extension qualifier plus the core qualifier gives different options to people who receive the metadata, different research options. And I can link, for example, other titles about Roman Britain, so a map from the Ordnance Survey on Roman Britain or another popular history of Roman Britain. I also have two place qualifiers. I have a place qualifier for historical places, ancient Rome, so a way of linking across subjects looking at ancient Rome, but I've also got one for Scotland as we're specifically talking about Scotland. Here. Um, <clears throat> I'm not going to use a more precise um, a code than this because one of the um, things about this book is we don't know where that battle took place. And that Scotland code allows me to link to other books on Scotland. So any, if, you, if you're including this data, it's a way of creating lists or, or research, uh, filtered searches around topic of Scotland. But that's not all. I've also put in some B codes here. So yoga, complementary therapy, mindfulness, using yoga for exercise as my principal code. But when I look at the publisher's description, if we look in the second from last paragraph, the last sentence, uh, the publisher describes this book as uh, both dramatic and inspirational, but also tongue in cheek, quirky and funny. So we've put that in the description. So do one of the questions you might ask when you're classifying books is, is it relevant to put this in the humor section? This would be a choice for a publisher to make. And may I just say, these are my choices of codes. They don't necessarily re reflect what the publisher actually does. So <clears throat> when you're considering which codes to add, do I put this in the humor section? If I put it, as well as being in the yoga section, putting it in the humor section, am I pigeonholing this book? Is that going to make people think it's not a book, but also is about yoga as well? So again, that's a choice for publisher and perhaps the author themselves to decide, is this a humor book? Uh, because there are humor books, Yoga for Cats was a classic example of a humorous book of illustrations. And of course, now you've got Yoga with Cats, which is not so humorous. Also, as in the approach is not humorous um, of the books, they're serious books. The um, Scotland code, we could actually be more precise because in the author, the published description, we say that this takes place in the Highlands. So we could use a more precise uh, Scottish code. We still have that Scotland element because Scotland is still the root of this code, but we're going to add a bit more precision in there. <clears throat> and we can use that precision to go a bit more details because Thema has a lot of Scotland code. So we have a book set in the, the on, particularly this book is actually set on the Isle of Lewis. So we can use the code for the Outer Hebrides. I've also used three different W codes because this book is about it's about cuisine, it's about baking, but it's also travel writing. It's a mixture of both. Um, so we have the two, co two codes, but it's mostly about baking. It's mostly recipes. So I'm going to choose that as my main subject because if you're going to put it in one section, I think you put it in the ba baking section. I'm also going to say it's about regional cuisine because they're traditional recipes or in that new recipes from the Isle of Lewis. Now, the publisher will choose these thema codes, these thema qualifiers, but the retailer can make different choices, supply the information. So if I was running something called the cookery bookshop, I make make choices about how I display that information. Um, I will probably have very specialized areas. So I have my baking section, but then I'll probably give uh, people who use my website options to search by baking by type, baking by region, I also might put this book under food writing as well. It's one choice. <clears throat> if, as, if I was running something called the Scottish Bookshop, I would display my interest differently because I'm trying to, uh, I would display my information differently because I'm aiming for a different audience. So I'd have my Scottish interest section, for example, then have my Scottish food section, books about the Outer Hebrides, 
writings about the Western Isles, for example. So I can use the FEMA codes, the FEMA qualifiers as a retailer to create my own sections to give choices to my own to my client. Now, as Karina said, uh, the reason we're doing these series of talks is that the big subject classification are going to be withdrawn um, next February 2024. Um, and sorry, no, in February 24. The um, I just want to make a comparison uh, between Thema and BIC. So Thema encourages uh, greater use of post coordination. That is the using more than one, as, we, as we've seen in the example, using more than one subject to create greater meaning, mixing subjects uh, with qualifiers, allowing people who create retail websites or other, other websites to, to, to filtered searches, faceted searches. Um, there's far greater detail and depth in the Thema subjects and the Thema qualifiers. So it gives you improved search options as well. And just again, sticking to the theme of the Hebrides. So BIC, the big subject codes were, were good. They had a certain level of detail. So you could actually express Western Isles out of Hebrides. You couldn't express in the Hebrides here. You'd have had to use the parent code for both. Um, <clears throat> but the BIC codes frozen since 2010. There's no development on them. What FEMA has is it's given far greater detail to the Scotland section. So now under Scot Northern Scotland, Highlands and Islands, we have far more choice. And also we now have an Inner Hebrides section where we have a bit more detail. And if we in the future needed extra level of detail under the Outer Hebrides, we could add codes for Harris and Lewis, for example. Other things in FEMA, FEMA has the online browser tool for searching and it has a lot more information so you can search for something for example if you search for edinburgh you'll get edinburgh capital of scotland but you also get tristan de Kuna because in the search options the the main settlement capital of tristan de Kuna is called edinburgh of the seven seas so there is more sophisticated searching also on the thema browser <clears throat> Again, here we are encouraging uh, post coordination by using two codes to express the the to create what this book is about. It's a travel guide about activity holidays, specifically about walking. So we use a W code and we use an S code to create that meaning. And then we have the place qualifier to say it's about the Cairngorms. And as you can see, the Cairngorms is part of this hierarchical structure. It's one of the sub codes under the Grampians. Um, the publisher themselves would choose the Cairngorms code because it's perfect for this book. But somebody who receives that metadata has an option. This is part of a hierarchical code. Perhaps if you're a, a travel bookseller in France or in the United States, you might not need that level of detail. Maybe you'll just store it behind the scenes. But on your website, you might display just Scotland or maybe the UK or even Europe. Sometimes you don't need very much. So this is a guide to Scotland. So you just need a travel, travel, the travel code, travel and holiday guides, WTH, and one place qualifier, Scotland. Um, this being uh, a guide, you, the publisher would most likely make the table of contents available, either via look inside kind of things, by sending um, the table of contents inside their metadata, inside the Onyx, as text, maybe as a downloadable one as well. You've got all that information in the table of content. So even if FEMA itself has a code for all the places that are mentioned in that table of contents, we don't need to add all of those. We just need the one Scotland code. If you find yourself on, with the qualifiers or with subject codes, adding multiple codes from a, from, un, from a particular level of a hierarchy, then you should be looking at upper level and saying, maybe I just need to add the global code for these, not all this detail. Because again, FEMA is not about keywords, FEMA is about classification. Because if we put in all those Scottish codes, that would be far too many and anybody receiving them would probably just make that choice anyway to move it up a level.
now the subject that could either be for general a general audience or maybe more academic things like art this is aimed at a, a broader audience again this would be expressed in the onyx again i'm using 3a codes to, to describe the book i'm choosing one as my main subject and then i'm using three different qualifiers i'm using a place to say this is about the art in the, the region the sub, part of france i'm using a time period to say it's about the 1920s and i'm using a style qualifier from the 60s um, thema doesn't have in the art section something that says art nouveau uh, art art nouveau design art nouveau architecture we have style qualifiers which can be used with primarily any of the art codes or anywhere that art nouveau makes sense and again so, Subject classification is really good, but there are other elements of metadata that can also be very useful, that can be used in combination with your subject classification. So for example, in Onyx, there's a thing called name as subject. Um, this is a structured way to send data to say, this book is about a particular person, be that an individual or a collective entity. That person could be fictional or could be real. And you can also include things like the international standard name identifier, ISNI, or other identifiers. So we've got a structured element that allows people to receive data to say, okay, this is a book about Charles Rennie Macintosh. We also have his ISNI, so we can create links or cross references between different things about a particular individual. Structured data like this is better than keywords because keywords is just a list. This is a structure, so it can be useful. So always look at your uh, data in conjunction with everything else, your FEMA codes in conjunction with the rest of your metadata. And that's it uh, for me. Um, these slides will be made available by BIC. So, and also there will be a recording. So don't worry if you didn't see everything. And I shall hand it back to you, Karina. Great. Thanks, Chris. Um, let me just get my screen up again. There we go. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. OK, well, thank you for that very much. Uh, well, thank you very much for that, even. <laughs> um, so yeah, just some observations. Um, what strikes me is the truly international nature of this scheme. Um, and I think that is made obvious, um, or at least obvious to me, by the fact that you have, um, there are more national um, national extensions than there are actually subject categories. I thought that was, that was interesting. Um, that sort of just reflects the truly international nature of, of the scheme. Um, and, I think that to your point about the choices that publishers need to make. So the, the example of kill to yoga, do, is it do you do you put humor? Do you do you leave that out, etc. So and, and again, just reinforcing that there is no right or wrong answer. It, it is really mm -hmm. down to the public initially to, to set that um, to, to set the, the, the information or, or to, to, to give as much information as possible so that then the retailer can um, make decisions and, and, and those books can be made discoverable. Um, and also I liked your example of um, your, your varied example. So going from sort of quite complicated in depth the, um, ex uh, examples of, of classification and then looking at the top 10 Scotland and, and the simplicity of that and that, that that's okay too. <laughs> mm -hmm. it doesn't Depending on the, the content, depending on what you want to achieve, you don't have to be you know, going into absolute depth with everything at all times. So yeah, I thought that was uh, reassuring to those who are perhaps not so familiar with FEMA. So thank you for that. Thank you, Karina. Um, so now I'm going to, um, let me just get my screen working. So next we have, um, Sarah Spencer. Um, Sarah Spencer, I'm going to invite you to take the stage, the virtual stage. Um, Sarah is sales director at Cicerone Press um, and is going to share some background with regards to how and why um, Cicerone, um, which is a small independent publisher, 
manage their migration to FEMA, what challenges they overcame and how they now approach FEMA classification given their depth of specialist non-fiction categories. So over to you, Sarah. Great, well, thanks very much. Um, so, yep, yeah, I'm Sarah. As you may be aware, um, Cicerone is a, a specialist publisher of walking, trekking, mountaineering, and cycling guidebooks. Um, we were an early adopter of Onyx, and we started including Thema in our feeds from early 2018. I'm a massive fan of metadata, and I spend a big chunk of my time managing data here at Cicerone. So why did we start to uh, use Thema? Well, there were three main factors initially and not in any particular order. Um, firstly, Amazon were using it. And you know that was a good enough incentive for me. And as Thema is a global and a multilingual scheme, you know, it makes perfect sense for a retailer such as Amazon to adopt it. Secondly, our German distributor required it. And being the control freak that I am, I decided it was better for us to provide them with the Thema information for our books than from someone at their end to decide which classifications to use and then to feed that out to the world. And lastly, um, the classifications in Thema provide much greater depth and detail um, than BIC, which is perfect for a specialist publisher like Cicerone. And Karina, if you could bring up the um, slide, I can sort of demonstrate an example of what I mean by that. So here's one of our titles. Um, it's a walking guide to a route across Spain. It's a pilgrim route called the Camino de Santiago. So in BIC, you can see that we're able to categorise it as a travel and holiday guide. We've got the um, category of walking, hiking, trekking and then it's a guide to Spain. Whereas with Thema, we're able to be much more targeted um, to, to help signpost people to this book so they can find out exactly what it is and get it um, ranged in the right categories. So within Thema, we have a much more um, defined um, travel guide category, which is routes and long distance ways. I still have my walking, hiking and trekking category, and then I have two new ones that became available to me in Thema. Um, one was pilgrimage, and then my geographical um, qualifier became much more specialist, and it's the way of St. James. So because it's a subcategory of Spain, I don't need to add that here. So as you can see, it just provided, you know, for a specialist publisher, just a much more um, detailed way of being able to, to categorise this book. So how did we go about um, implementing Thema? I started with the editor website. Um, there is so much useful information here. I also had quite a few conversations um, with Chris over various London book fairs over the years about uh, sort of getting Thema going. Um, we have a bespoke system and we manage our Onyx in-house, so there was a little bit of development work that we needed to do to integrate Thema into our database and feeds, and Chris, as ever, was a, a great sort of guiding hand at, um, at sort of giving us the, the information and holding our hand along the way. Um, there's a Thema implementation email group you can join where you can post questions and seek advice. Um, editor um, also um, can answer questions and, and people within the group can provide um, advice and things and I, I would highly recommend you joining those groups. There are spreadsheets again on the editor website where you can take your current BIC or BISAC information and it will help you map across to the relevant theme codes. I made the decision pretty early on not to use this, um, why you may ask. Well, there were many new Thema codes um, that became available to me that may have been missed by relying purely on the mapping. And as I was still have wanted to do a, a full thorough go through after doing the mapping, I decided not to use this step and um, sort of start from scratch, really. 
Um, however, if you've got a large list or you just want to get sort of started and have something, then they may be a great option for you. As part of my initial preparation, I went through the full list of relevant theme codes that were available to me, looking in detail at the class description to make sure I was um, picking up new codes that become available and making sure again that I was assigning the right theme codes to our titles. Um, I also did a number of searches in the online category browser on the editor website. It's so easy to use. And from this, I was able to create my own um, short list of relevant codes. We're quite fortunate here at Cicerone that, you know, we, we publish um, books within sort of similar categories and genres. So I don't have to keep hunting every time we publish a new book for, for anything new. Some of the codes, um, when I was looking at it back in sort of 2017, didn't quite fit our needs. Um, so I put these forward um, to Chris and many were reviewed and added to Thema in later versions and updates. So, you know, if you're moving to Thema and you have a, a batch of books or there are things that don't quite um, meet your needs, you know, talk to Chris and the team. Um, you know, they're there to work on our behalf to, and they're always adding and, you know, making iterations. So, you know, they're there for you. I did all the work in a spreadsheet. Um, we have groups of titles where I could assign the same theme codes. So for example, we have a number of books that cover walks in the Yorkshire Dales. So once I established um, my group of theme codes for um, a title such as that, I was able to quickly copy and paste the same code um, to a batch of similar books. And then, um, our web developer was able to then just ingest all of that into our in-house system. Actually going about it, um, for me, I found it was easier to just block out some time in my diary. And when I was working on the spreadsheet, I actually sort of locked myself away in a dark room for a few days. I put an out of office up for my email and I found that having no distractions meant that I really kind of got on a roll with it. And after I'd done my sort of initial thinking and preparation, I found that actually I got the work completed pretty quickly. And you know, as with many of these things, it wasn't quite the big job I thought it was going to be. Um, so sort of getting started with Thema, some challenges you think you may need to overcome. You know, you might say, well, we're a small team. Well, so are we here at Cicerone. Um, I'm the only person looking after sales. So you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. Perhaps you think you might need some specialist help or knowledge. Um, if you're using a book trade system such as Dyson, then Thema is already in there and waiting for you. You just need to start populating the fields. Um, maybe start with front list or a batch of similar titles where you can make some quick wins. And you know, if you're using Bic or, Bi or Bizac, then you already have the knowledge. You know, this is a a sort of similar thing they're just a sort of a different set of codes and you know used in a maybe slightly different way and you know if what i've said hasn't inspired you to get started then i'll leave you with the message that bic will be obsolete in 18 months time so you will get to a point where you know you need to do this so thanks for listening that's that's everything from me back over to karina Great, thank you, Sarah. That was that was great, and it's good to hear. Really good to hear from a from a smaller publisher um, that it, it, it's not it's not well. Again, depending on the size of your list, but it's not insurmountable. It's not impossible. Um, it's eminently doable, um, and it's, it's good as well to hear about the challenges. Um, it's interesting as well that you didn't use the mapping that you started from scratch, because um, I think I think. Perhaps some, some maybe publishers, may, maybe smaller publishers, perhaps may think that they have to use the mapping, but it, it's not a requirement, is it? it, it it's, it's there as a tool to help. And if you find that it's not helping, um, then um, the, there is the online browser and, and the, the, the way of approaching it, as, as you've just said. Um, and then it's good to hear about the, the ease of using that Thema browser as well. And then a good reminder that um, BIC will be on BIC codes, sorry, <laughs> will be obsolete um, in 18 months. So, uh, so thank you.
I'm sure there'll be some questions from, from our audience coming through as well. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so without further ado, and he's already there, which is great. I'm going to hand over to um, Kieran Smith, who is our final speaker today. Um, Kieran is Digital Director at Blackwells and Wordery within Waterstones, and um, he'll be talking today about Thema from um, different perspective, that of the retailer and the customer. Uh, we'll hear we'll hear how and why Blackwells uses Thema to aid visibility and discoverability, um, not only for new titles, but also for the long tail of niche titles, um, and how this standard might be used for additional purposes beyond um, initial classification. So over to you, Kieran. Thank you, Karina. Yeah, I'm gathering brand names. <laughs> and we've got, of course, within the Waterstones group, we've got Foils and Hatchard's websites as well, plus more to come. Uh, I mean, I, ha I haven't got any slides, so I'm just going to infuse at you through the screen. Great. Very, very keen um, about Thema and the opportunities that it has. I'm, and I really, I suppose I'm, I'm kind of here today to say to you, uh, spend as much time as you can on it. Um, one of our biggest challenges, I think, is that the bit classifications, great as they were, have not really given us an opportunity to fully aid discoverability where we are today. With this, everyone knows, you know, that the, we talk as a trade about the huge numbers available of titles. Uh, I think Blackwells today has around 14 million unique titles available through the website. And we're really only as good as the data can be there. Uh, and you know, I want to give you today a few examples of, of the um, areas we're thinking about in terms of how Thema can assist us going forward. Now, um, the, the first of those really is, I suppose, creating lists. And we again, we talk a lot about lists as booksellers, either where we're being asked directly in store by customers to put something together um, it, or by using them on the site. We manually build lots of lists every day. But at the moment, and going back to sort of what Chris said as well, it's very dependent on keywords. It's dependent on whether or not the subject is in the title or the subtitle, it's in the synopsis, and, and obviously if it's in a classification already. Now, I think the qualifiers give us so much power and also give customers the power to do a lot of that sorting themselves. Um, and they also give us the ability to start shaping the presentation of the longer tail of books in a way which will really assist publishers and booksellers and customers in terms of finding stuff. Now, what I mean around that is one of the big challenges that we have is around, I suppose, the consistency in which classification data is presented by every single bookseller. Um, Again, the previous speakers have talked about kind of if you're a specialist bookshop, in a way you've, you've got a smaller list to try and curate. But if you're dealing with the um, large number of titles that are available, what you actually want to do is kind of cut those up into little niches so customers can discover other books that are related to the interests that they're, they're after, or they can filter search to actually get to the title that you want to sell them. Um, but thinking about that in terms of the environment that we're operating in now, it also means that there are opportunities for us, say, in social media to link through to a curated, qualified section where it is relevant to something that's happening now. And we can be very quick off the back of that. So we can just use that to sort and cut the data appropriately. Google also struggles with the fact that at the moment, every single classification pretty much um, is presented in the same way. So again, through both SEO and through paid advertising search, we think there are loads of opportunities to actually use qualifiers in conjunction with other bibliographic data um, to actually point customers again at a more uh, refined search, which will lead to better conversion. Uh, and I think, you know, I, it's <laughs> it, it, as much time as you can spend on that would be really appreciated because I think it gives you the ability to kind of reach into our websites and really optimize around the products that you want to sell. Um, not, not all lists are kind of uh, 
visible to to you in terms of what what's on the sites at the moment or um, we do a lot of legwork in the background as well as I say that might be personal conversations between a bookseller on the shop floor and a school uh, we do a lot of work with the NHS every month we provide them with lists for uh, medical specialists uh, or for even general actually community practice as well and again if we've got the ability to cut that data in the right way there's a very real world aspect to it um, it's definitely not just a case of it being a theoretical exercise of trying to get your your book in the right place because we like codes um, another area that we're very passionate about certainly for blackwells and wordery is a large proportion of our business is export um, and the opportunity that we want to put in over the next sort of 18 months is to be able to use those international versions of the classification scheme so we can map we don't even have to map actually because thema does a lot of the heavy lifting for us we can move the uh, we can show the categories that are relevant to our german customers so your books will automatically be in the right place and at the moment what i would say is that we although we've implemented thema in a kind of first step on flatwells and we'll roll it out to other parts of the estate um, we are mapping the BIC classifications onto Thema at the moment, and it's 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 okay, but it's certainly not as good as it could be. Uh, and again, opportunities <laughs> there are plenty. So really, I suppose that's what I want to say. I want to say, spend the time on it, get as much data in as you can. We are very open to conversations as well. Uh, so if you think, well, is this working? How will this look? Uh, very very keen to talk to you about that i mean i was with the two with with what chris and sarah were talking about i was immediately thinking well if you've got all these geographical qualifiers you know we could do exciting stuff like have a map and and you could actually click around the map as a customer and find stuff using that data and i think really what's exciting for me is the opportunities for booksellers to kind of innovate off the back of that and we've not really had within the existing bic uh data the the richness in order to do that and i'm very excited to see what all the booksellers do as a result thank you very much lovely thank you um kieran i really like that idea of a map um <laughs> i think, I do I think it now. that'd be great i like maps. <laughs> exactly um yeah and then and just hearing those numbers as well 14 million titles available online just really uh, you know reinforces the fact that the risk of titles becoming lost or not not visible not and if they're not visible they can't be discovered etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and how thema can really help with that and um and really narrow down um the, the searching and also give give customers what what they're looking for as well because it, okay. it with with that sort of breadth of of, of um catalog i i imagine it, it can't always be and and that and that's with 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 um yeah i mean when, when people when customers come to your website they probably have an idea of what it is they're looking for um but then as you said it's about pointing them as well to other areas that may also be of interest and how thema can be used used to help that um that process yeah and i think well. that, i mean we are, we're seeing a, a definite uptick in the amount of customers who spend more time browsing yeah and yeah. I, I think people's use of e-commerce has changed uh, maybe it's another result of coronavirus but um more time spent looking for things so it is a great time again to actually implement and think about how customers how your end purchaser of your book um how they're using the different channels to, to market yeah yeah brilliant thank you um and hopefully we'll have lots of questions um from from the audience so um thank you for that uh so now it's time to hear from our attendees um Q&A session is upon us. So as a reminder, if you've got any questions, um, please do put them into the question box. So I'm just going to check now and see if there are any in there. Have a look. Uh, yes, I think. Let me just give us a look. Yes, yeah, so um, Question for Sarah. You mentioned some thema groups that you've joined. Could you share those? Could you elaborate on what they are? 
it's all on the editor website so perhaps chris you may be able to um provide a bit more detail on that mm. yes um if you go to the editor website it's under thema um there's a, <clears throat> a job down menu standards then uh, maintenance uh, and support and then there's a thema international mailing list uh, uh, the information's there. Basically, you've got to send, you can just send us a, a blank email to just looking up the. We Sorry, could, um, Chris, I put you on the spot there. <laughs> we could include the link. Why don't we just include the link in our email to the yes. attendee? Would that be easier? <laughs> yes. I'll do that. We'll do that. Thanks. Okay. And as right. Sarah said when she was chatting, that is. That same thing exists for Onyx. It's a way for people to ask questions, to ask a question to, to, to people who are using it, not just to us at editor, but to anybody who's already making use of schema. So asking questions about how do I classify this or is there a code for this? It, that kind of thing. So, yeah. um, and it's open to anybody. Okay, um, so we'll just wait for some more questions to come in. Everyone's being a bit shy. Um, so. Chris, um, you mentioned the precision of qualifiers and extensions as being a decision for the publishers. Um, where do public do do booksellers have to go to the same? And, and for as a question for Kieran as well, obviously, um, do booksellers have to be able to to do their, do their systems have to be able to go to the same level of precision as I, the so publisher? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, the reason I use that Cairn Gorms example is it's quite far down the hierarchy, it's got several things above it, and for, so I chose one of uh, Cicerone's titles, um, that makes absolute sense for the publisher to choose the precise code, because if you're a specialist uh, walking travel bookshop in the United Kingdom, you're probably going to want that level of detail, oh. but it, as I tried to illustrate, the retailers can make choices. How they use that information because it's hierarchical you can always the retailer could map the codes back to them just back to scotland or you know if you're based in canada you just might want a uk section or or a europe section um so publisher chooses the most relevant code the most appropriate doesn't need to choose the one that will that a particular bookshop is using it choose the one that's most appropriate for the title and then the retailer Kieran can say more, but the retailer makes the choices how they use that, what they display to their customers, what they store behind the scenes, etc. Kieran, um, trying to make myself audible. Uh, yes, I mean we would we would go as granular as as we get the data. Actually, um, I, I suppose the only rolling up we might do would be if the, we felt there wasn't a sufficient number of titles within a particular qualifier to make it useful um if you've just got one book in there it could look like that was we were trying to represent we were saying that was the entire representation of that that subject area so we have to be a little bit careful on that front so again that's about the kind of richness of data that's coming in um the more more we can get the better really but i totally get i mean it's a slightly different use case for us because we're talking a huge number of books not necessarily a, a kind of narrow vertical cut on on a subject area so uh, absolutely yeah yeah so I think then the, the advice is to provide as much as you you've already said Kieran is just to provide as much data much information as possible so that the, the bookseller can, can make that decision and to go to a point that came up in the first of these talks um, from it was Libri the debt left power from Libri was talking about how they make use of it so they they create websites for bookshops and they have travel bookshops they therefore take they get the codes in the thema but then they display travel on a top level on their on the websites because that's what matters to those travel bookshops so thema is a series of codes that the publishers the creators of the metadata need to make sure it's as good as possible as precise as it needs to be so that retailers whatever their size can make choices if you're a small independent and you're using it you may you may have a tiny um travel section or a tiny history section you might just put everything under history 
or you might arrange everything to do with Scotland under a Scotland section, you know. Oh. But FEMA doesn't, FEMA gives information, gives precise information. It doesn't impose on retailers how they use that information. That's always a retailer's choice. Also, I'm looking forward to seeing the maps. I love that map. <laughs> I love maps. I want that map too. Oh, I think yeah. everybody wants that map. <laughs> Yeah. That would be brilliant. You started, you started something now, Kieran. I'll, I'll raise a ticket straight afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we've had another question come in. Uh, do you have any idea of how widely style codes are used, particularly thinking about literary titles rather than yeah. art and music? So let's <clears> try. <throat> Kieran, do you have any sight of those? Um, I'm not sure I can give a. I go to Chris. I'll go to Quite Chris. A one to answer, yeah. <laughs> it is, isn't it? So, for editor with Onyx with Thema, it's it's sometimes hard for us to know how people are using our standards unless people get in touch. Often we only hear from people um, when the, either when there's an issue or when they've got suggestions. We don't actually get visibility on data, so I don't know how or how the style qualifiers are being used. How many people are using them? Um, I assume if you're a specialist in the arts, you're probably going, yay, there's lots of these. Wow. Um, for literary styles, well, depends, because there are some that work for literary styles, but are they necessarily, is that what you're trying to say? No. When you look at the style qualifiers, is this book, is this a novel about Art Nouveau? Yeah, I'd use this, that, that Art Nouveau code because I have to think about if somebody's looking for Art Nouveau, what are they looking for? So if we take um, the notion of the map that Kieran's proposed, that would work for place qualifiers. If you're doing for style, if I, if I want to read about Art Nouveau, I want the artists, I want the architecture, but I also might want something that talks about the period, maybe a novel or something, um, rather than something that reflects that style in the way it's written. Art Nouveau, maybe not. Gothic, for example, is another one that is a word that's used in different ways in different contexts. So is this book about the Gothic period and Gothic, you know, in its different manifestations? Or is it what some people call a Gothic novel? In that case, should it should we use the Gothic style qualifier or should we use the horror, uh, supernatural fiction areas, dark, some of the dark codes, dark romance? Um, you know, it's the, I always think if you're if you're looking at these, think about who's going to be, you know, the bookseller, the customer. What would they be looking for? Why are you going to add them? So style, think it. You know, is it going to be useful? That doesn't actually answer the question because I don't know the actual answer <laughs> to the question. We'd need somebody yeah. from Nielsen to 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 give more information on that. Yeah, yeah. As I you guarantee say, it's, it's probably it's not difficult. enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, Sarah, more of a sort of specific question. Do you always use qualifiers and extensions? Are there, are there instances where you, you may not use them or you choose not to or and what might those be? Um, no, we're always using geographical qualifiers because I would say, aside from two of our guidebooks, they're all to a destination. They all they all cover a place. So um, yeah. yes, we're always using the the qualifiers. Okay. Um, just seeing if there's any more questions. Any more? <clears throat> to say about the yeah. use of qualifiers, um, Kieran mentioned they create lists for the National Health Service. There's probably a lot yeah. of medical books that just don't need qualifiers because um, the qualifiers don't make sense with them. So not everything needs qualifiers. But when they, when some subjects, you know, history, travel, um, yeah. they really lend themselves to qualifiers, but other things don't. Okay. Thank you. Um, we haven't got any more questions coming in. Um, did Kieran or Sarah or Chris, did you want to ask any questions of each other while we're here? <clears throat> Uh, I'd quite like to ask Sarah oh, if. Karen. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Go on, Karen. Over each other. You can do in a physical, but you can sort of wave it, can't you? 
Um, I was just going to say to Sarah whether you felt there had there was there was a kind of growing awareness of Thema. I'm just always aware with these events that everyone who comes is quite kind of aware already and maybe yeah. quite keen already. Um, but kind of how do we reach the, the the people who aren't thinking about it so much and and other ways to to spread the word? I think I think it's the same with with metadata full stop I think you're either into it or you're not and and for me I I love it I kind of found my inner geek and a number of years ago and it's just I I spend as much time managing data as I do selling books I see them as one as one and the same thing so you know when I go to IPG events or you know, talk to different people. People are either in the, oh, it, it's a metadata thing and, and I'll run away from it and bury my head in the sand. And we recently changed our distribution in Germany and I had this enormous 170 column spreadsheet that I had to fill in because they couldn't take Oronix. And they were really surprised that we had Thema um, because other English or, you know, sort of UK based publishers just aren't in a position yet to supply it to them and you know it's as i said in my in my sort of in my talk you know if you're using something like stison it's already in there you just need to you know find the right codes and and just sort of get on with it so i'm always a little bit surprised why there hasn't been such a take up um and like you know i don't think it's because you know the team at BIC or anybody hasn't been talking about it I think this it's just comes under that oh it's metadata it's scary it's I need specialist knowledge or I'm too busy and I'm kind of run away from it but this is getting to a point you can't run away from it anymore yeah and and to add to that we've had um every time BIC has a uh metadata committee meeting and or um one of its onyx or thema meetings the statistics for Thema use um, are often um, brought up by, by Nielsen because they, they, they are monitoring the, the, the data feeds in and the data feeds out, etc. And uh, encouragingly, the use of Thema is increasing. So every time we have one of those meetings, the statistics are increasing. So um, so that's that's encouraging. So um, and the fact that you know um, large large retailers. Um, Use use it as well. Um, I think that the, the more that the retailers start to ask for it, demand it, use it, etc., um, that 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 can only help as well. So, um, what I want to ask you, um, Sarah, is: Are you still using bit codes, or are you 100% Thema? We still send both um, in our feeds, and then yeah, we'll just get to the point where you know we'll turn them off in the future yeah. but at the moment um it's in our system it's in our onyx feed so yes we're still using both yeah okay and what, what would you say the main reason for using both is um partly because we manage our onyx in-house um so it would need some development um yeah. okay. to change our onyx so there's yeah at the moment the onyx is stable and i'm i kind of leave it be and we'll we'll continue to send both but it's on our agenda um because we're we're kind of moving platforms so it's on our agenda to update so that's interesting so it's more of an internal piece rather than um a sort of further down the supply chain concern about your trading partners perhaps not using thema yet so it's that that's that's encouraging as well so, um, can I say something about mapping? Um, yeah. Sarah, um, they made their decision to, a very good decision to, to, to do each, um, to, to add Thema natively, but the mappings do exist. So for larger publishers, for people who have system providers, you know, that often can be done initially as an automatic. If you've got the bit codes, it can be automatically mapped to Thema, and then you can start reviewing start with your front list then look at your key backlist titles uh, important backlist titles and then update those and if you need if you've got partners who are slow and are not moved to thema yet and still want big there's a there's a reverse mapping so you can and a lot of the uh, the systems providers already 
include that where you can auto it'll automatically add a bit code um, backwards. Those mappings um, are available as an Excel an Excel from the editor website. But they were done by Nielsen <clears throat> and Nielsen kindly donated them um, to make them available to everybody. So. Yeah, and you know we we did look seriously at, at using the mapping, but because we we wanted to do the the sort of transition to Thema in one go, and what I didn't want to do was then have to do a second pass to add in those new codes that would have been missed by the mapping. But I mm -hmm. think it and the mapping would be a fantastic way for a a large publisher um, to get up and running or for someone that just wants to get you know what we just need to make a start so we'll just use the mapping and then you know when we have some time or you know we'll just review each one over the next months years whatever it's a great way to get started mm -hmm. thank you um, I'm just checking if there's any more questions. Bear with me, I'll just have a look. Uh, question box. Uh, no, everyone's being very quiet today. <laughs> I just, um, coming back to a point Sarah made about contacting us at Editor and, and saying by asking questions or making suggestions, that's a really important part of all our standards is that feedback from people who are using them so we can also, ah, maybe we need a new a new code there or, or and to improve the notes and there are and from the united kingdom it facilitates a thema group which meets um every three months uh, which examines the use of thema looks at questions about thema in the, in the uk but so you can go through that group or you can come directly to us but that's important and we will as sarah said look at those and then there is a review po process with these different national groups and the international committees that validate that and then we may add those codes to to thema so it's important to to communicate to the mailing groups don't hesitate oh. to contact Bic as an organization or editor and uh, on that chris for those that may not be aware could, could you talk through the sort of the, the criteria for um introducing a new code so do there need to be a minimum amount of books published or is there a, a, there other well, consideration? Um, we don't set a minimum number of books because it will depend on the on the topic. Uh, for example, the the the, Shem, the Camino, the sorry, the St. James's Way. Um, there are quite a few books, but proportionally to the number of books on dark fantasy, it's quite small. So it depends what area we're talking about. But if you do come up with a suggestion for a new code, it's good if you can illustrate it by saying, here's some books that could use this new code. Um, because what we do at Editor, we compile a list of all those suggestions, but we don't make the decision. So when we start work on a new iteration, so the next iteration of Thema will be 1.6, um, what we do is we form a, a working group made up of people from different parts of the world and different parts of the supply chain they examine all the, the proposals and then make a proposal to the different national groups who then put that forward to the international steering committee who will make a final decision. So anything that's added to Thema, um, it's based on consensus, it's based on a real need in the supply chain. If you only have examples from your own list or it's fine, but if you can find examples from other, from other publishers, other, other languages, etc. It makes it easier for us. And it's truly, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's we can't emphasise enough that it is a truly international and collaborative scheme that yes. that is, um, you know, responds to um, the the feedback from from the users. Um, it's not it's not a static scheme. Uh, standards have to. In our industry, we have a very we have an industry that's constantly evolving. So we have to be able to, to, to update the supplies to Onyx as well as Thema. We have to be able to add in new concepts. Obviously, sometimes there are things that are trending. There are other ways using keywords, descriptions to pick up trending terms. But if that trending term becomes a new thing and becomes established, it's quite likely to get added to a classification scheme. Um, yeah. 
Okay. You look like you're going to say something else, Chris. Yeah, I thought I'd stop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we don't have any more questions coming in. So, um, was there were there any other questions that um, any of you wanted to ask each other, or any observations or comments or last thoughts? There was what just when Chris was talking about um, sort of the way in which it's a very dynamic environment, and I, I suppose I'd seen a, an example of that recently where there was a bit of a Twitter campaign kicked off for. Uh, easier discoverability effectively because they're just saying we can't find um an easy way for fiction uh, with characters who are disabled in them uh, yes. to be found and actually it was quite an interesting use case and they put quite they were particularly targeted at one large online retailer who i think has manually added that category and i don't know i think they probably manually created a list but you know and that also goes back to the question about how much are the qualifiers for fiction being populated but theme is an ideal um, framework to actually have that ability to say, well, I want to look at fiction. I want to find out which ones have got a disability element to them. Um, and I just think we're going to see more and more of that as we go forward. So unless that data exists on those titles, we're just, it, you know, you don't want to be relying on booksellers' memories too much because oh. <laughs> we, we forget <laughs> stuff, you know. And it's that, often that's well, what it kind of comes down to. Everyone goes, there's an email goes around, you know, we get one every couple of days, going, who knows any books about X? And it'll be some obscure sort of niche. And we all go, uh, oh, yeah, I remember this. Because we, quite, we uh, like to remember, but we can't really remember 14 million. So. I was just going to say that with 14 million titles on your list, I'm not surprised. <laughs> so really, again, it comes back to anything and everything the publisher can do by using Thema and obviously other elements of, of um, metadata to, to give as much information as possible. Um, the, and, and, go on. Sorry, Karina, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was going to say, uh, uh, with what Karen said about that recent uh, campaign, what's very interesting is Thema already has qualifiers, like detailed qualifiers for particular disabilities. But if that data is not there, it doesn't matter how big, I mean, as Karen said, 14 million titles. You know, do you dedicate somebody to actually go and double check and find all those books? If, if the data is there, if, you know, Sarah puts the Cairngorms in, somebody can then say, I can create a list of that for Cairngorms. But if you just put fiction um, and then there's a very broad description, even the most sophisticated online retailer is going to have quite a lot of difficulty in finding those books. So even if your big partners if you're a publisher your big partners don't seem to be using it yet think about you know the right level of detail for that title now you're not necessarily going to come back to that title later because you know, you're already got the nuance, got to, to, the nuance to do you've yeah. got your other jobs to do sarah can't lock herself into a dark room every every three months to re-update all the all the titles so you know think about it so oh. even if you think somebody's not using the qualifiers if publishers of fiction were using those particular 5pm qualifiers then when the when when a retailer decided to create a disability fiction section it already could search and see ah oh, right we've got these titles that's what makes the difference mm. i always remember going into a big bookshop in london and when i was doing some research for a talk on uh, in diversity and asking the bookseller if they, if they had a particular list and she did the classic bookseller thing. Yes, we have a list. We write it at the till. Every time some, we find a book, we note it down. So we have a physical list. We write it down because that was the only way they came across books. And they noted it down because, as Kieran says, we can't always remember every single thing. But there was no other information about those books available to them. So they have to create, booksellers do really well. They create lists like that. So putting the right level of detail helps booksellers find those books on obscure subjects instead of doing like yes yes there was that book that came out i remember it was wasn't it from um you know had the yellow cover yeah. we had to return yeah. it yeah that yeah. conversation can i just add in another tip as well um so uh, as chris mentioned you know they they meet from from time to time and you knew um new codes are added um, and those lists are published and, and you know they're available on, on the editor website as well 
and I do always glance through them to make sure that I am up to date with the latest codes because there may be um, there's been some new geographical qualifiers where you know a country you know for example in Spain they I've now have deeper deeper geographical qualifiers that I can use that are more relevant to some of our titles so I do always you know try and keep on top of it and think okay that's now useful to me and I'll apply it to my backlist and it doesn't take very long and it's wow. just good housekeeping just to keep on top of these things as FEMA develops because going forward it being you know a sort of global subject it's just going to keep building and building and building so it's not just okay i've done it I'm, I'm done just keep an eye on the developments yeah and there's um, that point that the, the documentation that editor put up it's very clear it's it's color coded as in you know what's the modification what's brand new etc so it, it, it's really user friendly it's mm. gone kieran i'm just gonna ask a question because i don't i don't know the answer to this at all which is probably good with a question but um does it is it going to work in reverse in terms of sales reporting back to publishers so you can go you know i'm interested in publishing a book about a walking trail in you know x part of the world uh, and then be able to see what the sort of sales figures are for a level of that of granularity around that for other titles published in that i mean i don't know what level you get currently but thinking from sort of broader book trade sales figures probably a question for nielsen i would have <laughs> thought <laughs> it just seems um, like an opportunity there as well because yeah. it's, it's kind of, oh, yeah. if you think well, you know this this particular subsection is is growing really well in terms of sales then then obviously that's maybe one to either yeah. avoid or jump on depending <laughs> i mean with um because of the, the things like the qualifiers and subject codes, there is the opportunity to collect statistical data. If, you, wow. if you're using um, on, Onyx, the notion of main subject when you're sending more gives people, oh, right, that's the main one. These are the ones we're going to track maybe for charts and things like that. But having that level of detail, you can build up <clears throat> quite interesting data sets for, for different things, different combinations. Yeah, I would have thought so. For your set for your own organization you're talking about rather than the, the trade more widely or i guess you could do the trade you could have the trade yeah. as well if you have the likes of nielsen and co <clears throat> they're, stand, they're standardized codes yes yeah. they're, they're codes they're standardized and they are open it's a standard that's open for everyone to use so yeah. there are possibilities like the map like the map <laughs> We'll have to list. check in with Kieran. We'll check in with Kieran in February 24 and see if he's got the map. Yeah. Well, I'll blame publishers if they haven't put in enough geographical qualifiers. <laughs> if it's just Sarah's books, then we'll know. But... <laughs> There'll be a map of the all the different parts of the uh, the St James's Way, and we can look for the different books on each bit of it. All right, I'm just one final check to see if there's any more questions come through, and then I think we're going to wrap up this section. So, anything? No, no more questions coming through. So, um, we must have hopefully answered anything that anybody had in their minds. Um, so, I will wrap up. I think that's the end of. Um, everything I needed to say on that section. So yeah, so we're out of time. Well, we're not out of time. We've got a little bit of time um, left. So I'm just going to sum up, if I may. Let me just change the slide. Oh, there we go. So um, yes. Yeah, so just to sum up, then we've had an introduction um, to Thema that was from Chris at the, at the beginning, uh, very top level. Uh, and we've heard about how multilingual, um, how international and the, the scheme is and that it's a multilingual scheme. Uh, we heard about the six general rules of Thema classification uh, and the importance uh, and the precision that can be given by qualifiers and national extensions and subject codes working together. Um, we talked about the greater use um, and the possibility of post-coordination when using Thema as opposed to BitCodes. Um, and 
the greater depth of classification that is possible within Thema, which in turn aids greater um, visibility and, um, of course, from visibility, uh, dis discoverability, etc. Um, the the ease of using the Thema browser, the online Thema browser that's on the editor website, um, to help with your your classifications going forward, but also uh, in terms of migrating across to Thema. Um, and a reminder that Thema is not about keywords; it's about classifications. So I think that that is an important point to to remind everyone. Um, I think it was really interesting today to hear two completely different perspectives. So from a niche, small specialist publisher um, with a small team, uh, and then hearing from a, a large retailer with 14 million um, titles available online. So it's good to, good to hear that the contrast and the different, the diff, well, similar but different um, approaches to, to using Thema and implementing it within your sort of day-to-day -day operations. Um, and also about the challenges faced by um, by that initial implementation. So starting to think about, you know, how do we how do we go about migrating from bit codes to FEMA codes? What what's an easy way to do it? What's the most efficient way to do it? And how do we maintain it going forwards? Um, also, that feedback from users. Uh, those organisations using Thema as a, as a, a subject classification standard is, is really important to the ongoing development, accuracy and relevance of the scheme and is actively encouraged. Um, it's, it's important that, that Thema remains an agile, flexible, responsive uh, standard to make sure that it, it's always taking into account the needs, the needs of the industry. So feedback is actively encouraged. Um, we also heard from Sarah that uh, many publishing systems already have Thema implemented um, in, into their offerings. So, you know, if, if you're not familiar with where that might be or how that looks, please do talk to your systems providers. If you have a systems provider that isn't using Thema, um, please do con please do encourage them to do so. Um, we've heard about the use of Thema beyond classification, so we heard about how qualifiers um, and other metadata um, can, can help with discoverability, we've heard about the creation of lists, we've heard about um, creating targeted lists with links to, to um, curated qualified sections of books as well, so starting to think about not just using Thema to, to classify a book and, and forget about it, but, but how can Thema be used in other ways to, to benefit your business? Um, and also Thema as an aid to browsing um, for the end customer. Um, and then finally, just the, to, to emphasise, and this, this really sort of came from, from Sarah's comments earlier, is the importance of, once you've migrated um, to Thema, the absolute importance of keeping that up to date. So checking, checking on, on the editor website for you know, updates to code lists or new code lists, um, keeping up to date with, with, with that and making sure that you're your own data, but also your systems provider is keeping up with, with those changes as well. Um, so, just to wrap up then finally, um, that brings us to the end of today's session. We're going to make the presentation slides um, available on our website um, shortly and a recording of the session will be um, posted to our YouTube channel which, as I've said, is available for everyone to look at. It's free. As long as you've got access to YouTube, you'll be able to, to see this, this session. So I encourage your, um, your colleagues to have, a, to have a look as well. There's, there's, um, there's several of them up there now. So um, they're a good resource and tool for you to, to have a look at and remind yourself of the various elements of Thema. Um, if you're keen to stay up to date with the, the work that we do, that BIC does, um, with our work and events, do feel free to sign up to our mailing list. Um, you don't have to be a member. Um, you, can, you can sign up there on the, the link on the slide there. Um, and in the meantime, I'd like to point you to two very helpful short documents on Thema. Big Byte number 14 uh, is a general introduction to Thema. Um, and Big Byte number 15 is an introduction to Thema for booksellers. So that, again, they're free to download, available to anyone. You don't have to be a big member. Please do go and have a look and help yourself. Um, share it with your, share those documents with your colleagues, etc. And so I'd like to take this opportunity now to say a massive thank you to our speakers on behalf of BIC, 
and everyone in attendance. Thank you to Chris, Sarah and Kieran for taking the time uh, out, not only to be with us today to share your expertise, but also for taking time out of your busy schedules to prepare and rehearse for today. To you, our attendees, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Please do stay in touch and you can find out more about BIC on our website um, and we hope to see you at another BIC event in the near future. Take care until then. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <clears throat> Bye. Bye.